basically over the weekend and even on Monday night late as we are taping, Dante Moore announced that he is committed to transfer to Oregon where it becomes clear that Dylan Gabriel is slated to be the 2024 starter and Dante Moore is the heir apparent. This is also interesting as Ty, Ty Thompson went into the transfer portal almost as soon as Dylan Gabriel committed to transfer to Oregon. And this is basically swapping one really talented player for another really talented player. But I also think that Dante Moore is a bit of a level up when you're talking about your backup quarterback position from Ty Thompson and give Dante Moore yet another year to develop. I thought he would had the goods to play right away and he did, but he had his growing pains perhaps with Will Stein as his offensive coordinator and getting to learn from a savvy vet like David Dylan Gabriel He's going to develop into a better player and be ready for the Big Ten competition that he's going to face. I also think if you're Dan Lenning, it is really great to have a talent like Dante Moore on standby if anything should happen to Dylan Gabriel. Because remember, Gabriel went out for some time last season at Oklahoma, and that left Oklahoma in a really bad way. Basically getting beat 49-0 by Texas because you didn't have a starting quarterback that Texas felt was credible. So they just came after you. Also, it feels like Will Howard to USC is real. As a matter of fact, there are lots of folks that expect that to get done sooner rather than later. We'll see. Uh, coming out of Kansas State, outstanding. Had Kansas State in a dogfight with Texas earlier this year. They up and lose that game. But Will Howard also came off the bench last year to lead Kansas State to a Big 12 championship at a time when it felt like it was Texas Christian and only Texas Christian that was going to win the Big 12 championship. Going into the portal, there were lots of folks that had him going to Miami. There are other folks that even had him going to Mississippi State. There are some that had him going to Florida State. It turns out, well, he likes the weather in Los Angeles. And as my, my colleagues will tell you, hey, there's nothing wrong with the weather in Los Angeles. It's always nice out there. As a matter of fact, it rains out there, and they want to tell me about it. Whereas I live in Oklahoma, where it's cold, it's rainy, we get wind. You know what I'm saying? Weather's just weather out here. Out there, it's got one speed, sunny and nice. And it's going to be sunny and nice. If Lincoln Riley can get the quarterback situation under control, I'm going to get to the Malachi Nelson part of that here in just a second. But let me go back to Kyle McCord at Ohio State for just a second as he has tried, decided to commit to Syracuse. This was interesting. This is interesting on a number of uh, levels. Number one is Fran Brown coming out the gate going to get dues. Like Fran Brown was playing. Oh, uh, playing. He was defensive back coach at Georgia, took the head coaching job at Syracuse. And proceeded to tell people, I'm here. I'm not going nowhere, okay? I ain't got to cash no more welfare checks. I ain't got to get no assistance no more. I'm good. So the money ain't even important. Syracuse being down the road and being home, that is important. When you're listening to Fran Brown, you believe him. You can understand why he was such a devastating recruiter in his time, both at Baylor and at Georgia and all over, right? And then you get him in front of a guy like Kyle McCord, and he said, hey, why don't you come back closer to home? Because my man, Jeff Nixon, as soon as the Giants is over with a season, he's going to come down here. He's going to run the offense. You remember he ran the offense at Baylor. You know what kind of a man I am. We're putting the pieces together. And while there is no Marvin Harrison Jr. at Syracuse presently, there may not ever be one, right? I really enjoy this for Kyle McCord because he wanted to go to a place where he was going to start, where he had an opportunity to once more put some good tape on for NFL evaluators, give himself an opportunity to get drafted highly in the NFL draft after basically failing by Ohio State standards at Ohio State, which is to go 11-1. and one. Go 11-1, and one, make the Cotton Bowl. It's a failure. Why? Because they lost to Michigan. I, I continue to get roused up about this because somebody got to lose the game. It can't always be Ohio State. It can't always be Michigan. And I understand losing three in a row, but hey, y'all won 10 out of the last 11, yet this dude felt ran off because he threw 3,100 yards, 24 TDs, six INTs, and went 11 and 1 as the starter this season. Kyle McCord's a great football player. He's a five star football player. I think he has an opportunity to be really great at Syracuse. And I don't blame Syracuse folks if they don't know how to act because I'm sure there's a Syracuse fan out there who was like, oh, we got an we got Ohio State quarterback. We got a five star. Played with Marvin Harrison Jr., both in high school and in college. But can he hoop? At least Greg Pollitz can hoop. Can he hoop? They, they, they're going to have to get used to this whole football thing because I understand that Orange ain't really been about its football since Donovan McNabb. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, look, maybe, maybe you'll get on board. Maybe I just got to tell you that Greg Pollitz threw more INTs than he threw TDs. 
long live the Big Ten, dog. Or excuse me, Big Ten. The Big Ten, uh, the Big East, excuse me, Big Ten. Long live the Big East because I, I, I don't know that we're ever going to see a Greg Paulus situation ever again where a dude who was an outstanding basketball player gets to play quarterback at the collegiate level. I think C.J. Stroud had it right when he told me this. He's like, look, all football players want to be basketball players. All basketball players want to be football players, and we all want to play baseball. I get that. Maybe Kyle McCord could go out for the basketball team to make these Syracuse Orange fans feel a little bit better about their five-star quarterback choosing to join their program after Garrett Schrader was their quarterback just last year. I really like this for Kyle McCord. I really like this for Syracuse. I don't know that it's turned Syracuse into some sort of a world beater. I don't even know if they're going to challenge in the ACC, but they are certainly going to be fun. And it is a reason, once again, to believe in what Fran Brown is doing at Syracuse if you haven't been paying attention. Also, Malik Murphy decided to enter the transfer portal. That is the backup quarterback at Texas and a guy who need to come in when Quinn Ewers went down against BYU and against Houston and was really outstanding. It was really great, right? Played... Yeah, I thought magnificently well against in, can, in that Kansas State game, and he's got all the tools. Like, you're seeing his size. You're seeing his ability. I like Malik Murphy. I've always liked Malik Murphy, and I think given an opportunity to grow into the position, he's going to be outstanding. What I found wild is he chose to go into the portal as his team is two, two wins away from a national championship. First national championship at Texas is 2005, and everybody knew what he could do. So he said, I had to go into the portal because I just want to play. And it hurt him because that means he's no longer part of the Texas team that is preparing to play in a New Year's Six Bowl game in a college football playoff against an undefeated Washington team. And I think he was very diplomatic in how much he enjoys that program, how much he enjoys his teammates. And shout out to Steve Sarkeesian, who I think handled this about as well as you can. Because you're also dealing with a Quinn Ewers who has not come out and said that he is returning to Texas, but also could enter the NFL draft. I understand people feel some kind of way about Arch Manning being there, but you would like to have Malik Murphy continue to be a part of your football team going into 2024. But I really do enjoy knowing that he's going to get an opportunity. Now, the places that I thought he would end up are not necessarily the places that he is looking to go, but... As that story unfolds, we'll continue to follow it. I'm, I wonder whether or not that's going to get resolved before Christmas. I would not be shocked to find out that goes deep into January as Malik Murphy is that sort of a talent. We got two other guys that also are that sort of talent. DJ Uwe Unglele is still taking visits. Uh, Florida State seems to like him, but they're also waiting around to see what's going to happen with Cam Ward. Cam Ward also looking at Miami, Florida State. Many people have Cam Ward as the top-rated transfer portal quarterback in this class. But that might be up for discussion because on Sunday afternoon, Malachi Nelson launched his name into the transfer portal. If that name sounds familiar, it's because it should. He was the number one overall recruit in the 2023 class, 2022 National Gatorade Player of the Year. His last season at Los Alamitos, he threw for just under 3,000 yards, 35 TDs, and four INTs. He's coming off of surgery to his non-throwing arm, but we all thought that that guy was going to be the heir apparent to Caleb Williams until Lincoln Riley kept pushing that one down the line. And that was, I think, the most telling part of the Malachi Nelson experience at USC because even Avery Johnson at Kansas State, yeah, they were always going to make that guy their heir apparent no matter what Will Howard was going to do. I'm sure Chris Kleiman would have loved to have kept well, Howard, but Avery Johnson was always going to be that guy. You're also looking at guys like Nico Iamaleva, who was the heir apparent at Tennessee. Everybody understood who was coming after Joe Milton. You're looking at other dudes like Aiden Childs, who was the heir apparent to DJ Uwe Ungalale and essentially uh, followed Jonathan Smith over to Michigan State. You keep going through that top 50, and you could see very clearly who believed in their understudy and who did not. And it was becoming clear that Lincoln Riley, for whatever reason, did not want to play now Malachi Nelson in these garbage time parts of the schedule, but also wanted to get Caleb Williams every opportunity. I'm very curious to find out just how the Malachi Nelson recruiting experience goes in the portal, because as uh, my SJI homie, big homie, Antonio Morales covers a USC for the athletic. He wrote this last year after talking with Malachi Nelson. There's only a few guys I would be okay sitting behind, and the best quarterback in the country is definitely one of them. 
believing that Caleb Williams is the best quarterback in the country, but perhaps looking at a Will Howard or a Miller Moss and going, well, I'm better than them. So I'm going to go somewhere else where somebody else thinks I'm better than them. I'm curious to see who believes that and how that recruiting unfolds because this is a guy whose image was built around Los Angeles and built around USC, quite frankly. Whatever he decides to do from here, I think that's going to get upended unless you think that he's going to end up at UCLA. And I just, I don't see that given that Chip Kelly let Dante Moore walk and temperamentally feels like Malachi Nelson and Dante Moore, they got a lot of Caleb Williams in them. They believe that they are very good and they want you to treat them as if they are very good and go get what you're worth, right? I think it's also clear that, you know, Nelson doesn't think that the guy on campus or arriving on campus is, you know, better and made like an overdue book and checked out. But I think we're really looking at Lincoln Riley making a move that I didn't know Lincoln Riley had in him. A, you're letting the number one recruit in the 2023 class walk. B, you're letting a five-star quarterback walk. And C, you're going to get a quarterback, we think, in a guy like Will Howard, who doesn't exactly fit the profile of what we've come to see Lincoln Riley quarterbacks look like. He's deaf running the football. Caleb Williams is deaf running the football, but in a different way. Where it feels like Will Howard is a design runner, Caleb Williams is out there just kind of playing football. The way that Kyler Murray was kind of out there playing football. The way that Baker Mayfield was kind of out there playing football. He's improv The offense is very much in his hands. There's not a whole lot of point and click because that's not the way that Riley's developed his quarterbacks or his scheme. He wants the quarterback to go out there and make decisions, give him the play calls that make him feel confident and the plays that they can run well. You're also seeing guys like Mario Williams enter the transfer portal. But I don't know that Miller Moss is the answer here. And I'm saying that as USC is preparing to play the Holiday Bowl, looking like Miller Moss is going to be their starting quarterback. Remember that Caleb Williams was out there on one leg in the 47-24 loss to Utah rather than put Miller Moss in there, okay? Okay. I, I think that's telling. I, I just do. So if Miller Moss is fine being the backup at USC, that's great. There are worse places to be a backup quarterback. It's also worth pointing out that USC quarterbacks that have gone into the portal or have chosen to transfer ain't been all that great save Jackson Dart, right? And even Jackson Dart, you might say, did not reach or hasn't reached the potential of what we expect a National Gatorade Player of the Year to be. And yet if Malachi Nelson had the same sort of experience as Jackson Dart, would we say that he had underperformed? Maybe. But that's because we believe that number one overall recruits ought to be Heisman contenders and not leaders of 10-win football programs that happen to lose to Alabama and Georgia and beat everybody else they played in the case of one Jackson Dart at Ole Miss. Fascinating story. We did not expect to see him into the portal. I'm curious to see where he lands and what his suitors look like. But um, I, I, I think more than anything else, Lincoln Riley leaning into himself on this. Like, we've seen this the last couple of weeks with some hires that Riley has made first, you know, he let go Alex Grinch, which we all knew had to happen, but then he goes across town to get Danton Lynn, right? A rising star in the profession, great defensive play caller. And then he adds Matt Entz from North Dakota state who had won two national championships, who had all Americans who produced Trey Lance, who produced Jabril Cox, who's, been 60 and 10 as a head coach to be his linebackers coach at SC. And now he's letting a guy like Malachi Nelson go into the portal and going, okay, I can, I, I, sayonara, I'll be okay. As he's preparing to embark on a new journey into the Big Ten. I mean, there's so many unknowns going into the 2024 season for everybody, let alone a program based in Southern California where it's 70 degrees and sunny and you're going to have to play on the road to places like Ann Arbor, places like Madison. Places like Columbus, places like Minneapolis. These places are cold. That's what I'm saying. It's cold. It's cold. Got to be able to run football in the cold. Quarterback doesn't really matter that much in the cold. And yet, with a guy like Will Howard, you can run the football in the cold because that is a large human being. I've said this before. I probably need to say it again. Will Howard is as big as Cam Newton is. That is a large dude playing quarterback with a cannon for an arm. He's got all the tools. So maybe this is Lincoln Riley evolving his play scheme to fit what's going to happen in the Big Ten and perhaps what his defensive coordinator wants to run because it used to be, or it has been, Lincoln Riley wants to marry a defense with his offense. Maybe he has seen that his offense isn't worth a damn if the defense can't stop nobody. 
So maybe you build an offense that plays better complementary football to the defense. Again, fascinating to see how this goes, but I've been basically a part of the Lincoln Riley experience since he was offensive coordinator at Texas Tech, going to East Carolina, coming to Oklahoma. I, I feel like I have grown into my job like that dude has grown into his, more or less doing what we do at the same time. So I, I'm curious to see what this new era of Lincoln Riley football looks like, especially at a place like USC where he's coming off the worst season that he has had as a head coach, moving and shaking going on. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.